there's lots to do in my summer garden so I'm just going to cover some of the jobs that keep me busy almost daily at this time of year one of those is watering I've got lots of things in patio pots shrubs like hydrangeas pots of lovely lilies agapanthus just coming into flower hostas bedding plants sedums lots of different things and watering is an important almost daily ritual some of the pots could just be literally watered from the top and others I need to add some water from below so I water into the saucers that the pots are sitting in just check them every day if it looks like the pots are drying out you can just feel the compost or just see how heavy they are give them a little bit more water and if they are in a saucer I just top that saucer up every morning so that the pot has a reservoir of moisture to take up during the day the outdoor tomatoes are growing really really well I've used these metal spiral supports to support their growth just a couple of things I do regularly one is just twine the growth on to give it extra support as it's developing and this plant's already got one two three four trusses of fruit another couple of trusses of flowers coming there so really good crop for outdoor varieties but if you see any little side shoots developing like I've got growing out from where the leaf joins onto the main stalk there I just pinch those away I don't want any side shoots to go I just want one main shoot there's another big side shoot at the top because that one main stem is going to carry plenty of fruit I grow it as a cordon a single stem cordon oh there we are another side shoot just coming in there so just whip that away as well don't need these just one shoot per plant and the fruits at the bottom will gradually ripen up water them occasionally if the weather's really dry otherwise these plants will really be cropping well into autumn some of my apples are producing a really good crop of fruit but in many ways too many there is something called June drop which means that earlier in the summer if uh, some of the fruits didn't pollinate properly they fall to the ground and June drop means quite often underneath apple trees you find a range of little baby apples that have just dropped off the tree completely but sometimes an apple sets too many fruits and if you're too greedy in other words if you leave all these fruits to develop all you'll get is lots of small apples and I usually want slightly bigger ones to eat and I'd rather have fewer apples but bigger apples really decent size eating apples so if you do find that you've got fruits close together maybe thin out every other one leave a couple of fruits on there it's okay I've got a little group here three fruits together that's too many I'm gonna thin that down to at least two again here I've got one fruit and then two together I'm going to take one out just space the fruits out again here I've got three fruits developing I'm going to take one of those out as I say don't be too greedy I know it seems a little bit of a waste but really take my word if you left all these in place all you'll end up is tiny little apples so thin out maybe leave two maybe in some places maybe just leave one in others but certainly don't leave groups of three fruits that's far far too many the sweet corn is developing really nicely now this is a variety called swift it's grown as a block spacing the plants out probably about 18 inches two foot apart in a block and these will be coming into flower probably through July and give me the first pickings later in August into early September Swift I find is a really super sweet tender variety one of my favorites for eating and the climbing beans are doing really well 
got a couple of different varieties a flat podded french bean and also a pencil bean too some of the beans are nearly reaching the tops of their canes others a little bit shorter but these will be flowering as you move through into high summer and also carrying some delicious pods and another important thing to do is to keep your beans really well watered beans are one crop which you should not let dry out so if the weather is dry try and give the soil around your beans a really good soak with water at least a couple of times a week it's far better to give the ground a really good soak maybe a couple of times a week rather than just a little bit of water every day you want the water to soak right the way down into the lower levels that means that the roots will grow deeper down to explore the soil for that moisture and therefore deeper rooted plants I think survive better during hot summers and I grow a range of flowers annuals around my kitchen garden this is a lovely variety of cosmos actually I had cosmos in this bed last year they formed seed heads the seeds have dropped and these were self-sown cosmos didn't even have to sow them myself this year they've just come back on their own and these lovely flowers will be attracting beneficial insects like hoverflies which will feed from the pollen and nectar and it's lovely having hoverflies around because their larvae will be eating some of the pests around my kitchen garden too I'm leaving some of my parsley to flower and set seed parsley is a crop which is known as a biennial which means that quite often it will grow one year come back the next but it will soon bolt which means form flower stems like these it will come up and flower I like leaving the flowers because the beneficial insects like the hoverflies will be feeding from them and then I'll let them set seed and save the seed and of course if you're saving seed you can sow it and grow new crops and you'll be saving yourself a little bit of money by new seeds too I try and keep the continuity going in my kitchen garden too in these frames I've sown some chard different rainbow colored mixes you can use the baby leaves in salads or you can choose the bigger leaves to cook and put into stir fries and here under this frame I've just sown a range of beetroot seedlings are just coming up so these will be forming little baby leaves that I can pick and use in salads and then I'll let the others grow on to provide pickings of beetroot to enjoy later in autumn and through winter and it's important to try and keep up with your fruit picking through summer one of my earliest cane fruits is this lovely variety of tayberry so I pick these fruits regularly just checking over the plants every day or two to see which fruits are ripe and the tayberry will be followed on within a month or so with the blackberries which I've got growing down this row too I always grow a few cucumbers in a greenhouse and this has been one of my favorites for several years now it's a variety called Carmen it's an all-female cucumber which means that every flower should form a fruit and you don't get that pollination which leads to very bitter cucumber flavors it's a full-size cucumber and I love it because it's got good disease resistance particularly against a disease which attacks the leaves of cucumbers called powdery mildew which kills them off and you can lose the crop so early in the season if you don't grow a disease resistant variety so I love Carmen really decent size cucumbers they'll get even bigger than this if you leave them a little bit longer but I pick them when they're a decent size and it's an absolutely delicious crop I have though become a convert to little baby cucumbers and I'll show you why this is a variety called Nimrod now in the past I always thought why grow cucumbers which got little baby fruits when you could grow a cucumber which produces a decent sized fruit well I'll tell you why because it produces so many of them uh, as I say this is a variety called Nimrod produces probably at least one fruit 
at each leaf node as you go up the stem. And I've got here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got a dozen fruits already developing on this crop. So it's going to produce masses and masses of these little baby cucumbers. So if, like my family, you like your cucumbers for salads, then I think this is a really, really good variety to choose. Very easy to grow from seed, sow them around about March time. The earlier the better if you've got a heated propagator. You'll get a crop you can plant out, train up into the eaves of the greenhouse and give yourself pickings week after week after week. I'm growing four varieties of tomato in a greenhouse this year. My favourite is Garner's Delight. Small cherry sized tomato. Lots of people say it is the very best for flavour. I remember asking Alan Titchmosh once what his favourite tomato was. Garner's Delight came out top of his list. Second is a variety called Shirley. Shirley is a standard greenhouse tomato. Good sized crop great to grow in a greenhouse and undercover. New one I'm growing this year is this one called Floridity, which has lovely long trusses of fruits. Some people say you can get up to 20, 30, even more fruits on each truss. It's a little plum shaped tomato. And in taste tests that people have done in the past, it's come out as one of the sweetest new tomatoes. It's a really good promising one. I'm looking forward to growing that one. Lastly, I've got a variety called Akron. Akron in trials produce one of the biggest crops of all. Um, that is a, a new one I'm really looking forward to. Shirley and Garner's Delight have both got awards of garden merit as well. So four varieties of tomato all growing in these pots. Really looking forward to trying these this summer. Combination of varieties to put into salads, and also to use for cooking and making tomato soups and sauces. Now my lawn isn't perfect by any means, but I don't like using garden chemicals on it, things like weed killers and so on, because I've got my little dog, hello Bella, uh, who would be out on the lawn all day and I don't really want chemicals that she might be walking on and getting on her feet and, uh, and causing problems. So I don't use weed killers at all, which means that my lawn has got some weeds in it. Um, I've got some self-seal, Prunella vulgaris in here. I've got some buttercups in other places. I've got a bit of clover. I've got some daisies as well. So if I'm not gonna use weed killers, what do I do? Well, I'm gonna show you. With many weeds, and this self-heal Prunella is one, it will just grow really, really close. Uh, to the ground level. The flowering stems of the self heel, so you can see if I just tease them up, they get quite long and they just grow in amongst the grass. So when you mow over, you actually don't damage the roots and the, the weed will soon spread over large areas. So what you have to do is physically either use a trowel or a little garden knife or just do it by hand, is just tease up any of the bits of stem that you can find and pull them away just got to do this physically. Do it regularly, just wherever you spot a little bit of weed like this, um, this self-heal. Just literally pull them up with the roots. Follow the stems back down. It's something just to take your time doing. Don't rush. So you might not even need the blade. Sometimes you can just literally do it by hand. But I just tease up the stems and the growth. Try not to damage the grass, but and just whenever you find a bit, just pull the weed away. Just take your time, look closely, and wherever you find. Just see this bit here, it's rooted down here. The flowers are actually up over here. It just spreads itself, crawls through the grass. So it's a, a job that needs a little bit of patience, I must admit. This little clump of daisies has been here for a, a while now. I've enjoyed the flowers and so have the bees but I'm just going to tease some of these up now and just let the grass fill in the patch. As I say the weeds can just literally smother the growth 
of the grass completely. So just want to get this balance right, really. Don't mind a few weeds, but I don't want them to take over and smother the grass completely. So literally just pick over blade just to sever the roots if you need to, to try and get the roots and the top growth out completely if you possibly can. Now, if you're left, you can see some little bits of grass here which will fill in, but if you have got a completely bare patch, it might be worth getting some potting compost and getting some fresh grass seed, mixing the two together, sprinkling that over the area, watering it well, pinning down a piece of clear polythene over the top. Just once you see the grass seeds are germinated, you can remove that. You've just filled the gap to replace the weeds with some fresh growing grass. And I'm just going to highlight a few of the plants looking their very best in my summer garden. This is a new variety of Alstomeria I've bought this year called Havana. It's a dwarf compact growing variety in the Alstromeria Itacantia series. I've got this in a pot, just a small pot about, this must be about 14 inches wide. I put three Alstromeria plants in here and they've started flowering gloriously. Just look at little speckles down the throat of those blooms. Do you know the bees adore this variety too? Now I bought this variety because I've got its sister down here. Just going to pop down to show you Alstromeria sunshine. This is another dwarf variety in the Alstromeria Itacantra series. I've had this for probably about four years now. Started off with one plant in one pot and it gets bigger every year. I divided it up and now I've got about three or four pots of it because I've divided it up. Again, that lovely speckling on the throat. It's got a really long flowering season. It starts flowering May into June and then it goes on producing further flowering stems right the way through to the end of the year. Do you know, I had this in flower October into November. I move the pots just to my unheated greenhouse for the winter, just to give it a bit of protection from the cold and the wet. The stems die down and then in the spring, the new growth starts coming up through March into April. And by May time, you've got the flowers starting to form. And by June, you've got the first gorgeous flowers. And the bees do adore it. You'll have bumblebees visiting these flowers regularly through the day too. So this is Itacantia sunshine and the other variety in my new one this year was Itacantia Havana. On my garden arch I've got a mix of a few different climbing plants. On this side I've got the golden hop and on this side is my little poodle Bella. Hello Bella is a jasmine, a summer flowering jasmine called Fiona Sunrise. Beautiful golden foliage, fragrant white flowers. As I walk through the arch, I can really smell the beautiful fragrance which comes from these little dainty white flowers which you can enjoy through summer. It's a really, really good, I'd call it a climbing shrub to grow up a trellis panel alongside a garden arch or something like that. As you see it's already reached the top and it's growing over the top. The stems just sort of, they don't cling but they will just twine their way through the trellis panel and uh, give them a little bit of a helping hand through the summer as well just to get them up to the top. The tips of these new shoots here as you can see you've got the flowers coming you'll get a succession of these beautiful fragrant white flowers through the summer. It will carry those leaves right the way through to the end of the year. They'll but fall in the autumn, probably October into November time, and then it's deciduous so it'll lose the leaves completely in the winter. If I get any really long straggly shoots like this coming over and getting away, just, just to snip them back, cut them back a little bit, but otherwise this is a really really good shrub to grow alongside your garden arch. Got it mixed in here with some honeysuckle 
There's a wisteria down at the far end, which uh, flowered earlier in the year. And as I say, on the other side of my garden arch, I've got the golden hop. So it's a few climbers to add colour and interest to your arch, your pergola feature, wherever you've got maybe a garden fence or some trellis panels dividing up your garden. Really, really good shrub to grow. Jasmine, Fiona Sunrise. And this is one of my favourite summer bedding plants for fragrance. Growing it in a pot, you could put it in a hanging basket as well if you want. But this is Namesia Wisley Vanilla. And it really does uh, reflect its name. The vanilla fragrance is lovely. I've positioned this pot next to my garden bench because it fills the air with this wonderful aroma of vanilla. Beautiful repeat flowering performance. These flowering stems will just get longer and longer and taller and taller with new flowers opening from the tip. Really long flowering season, perfect in a patio pot. And this actually is its second year. I didn't do anything with the wind in the winter other than just cut the plant back down to its base put the pot in a sheltered position behind my garden arch and then come the spring new shoots began to form and it's come up and flowering again for a second year so this is just a little tip don't throw away your summer bedding plants at the end of the year because some of them you can get through the winter to enjoy a second or maybe even third year of flowering from them without having to do anything to them at all Keep an eye on your summer bedding plants, like your pots of pelargoniums, because they'll need a little bit of hands-on care through the summer. Uh, you'll have new flowers developing all the time, but these faded flower stems, really just follow them back to the base, just a little tiny break, pull it away, and just get rid of the faded flowers regularly. And then you'll have new flowers coming up through the summer too. And that's something I often do to things like pelargoniums before I go on summer holiday. The last thing I do is any of these mature flowers can actually be pink, picked off because if you leave them in place and you go away for a week or two, all that's going to happen is that the flowers will go over, the petals will fall, and if the petals sit on the foliage, it can cause rotting. But if you pick off the fully open flowers like these before you go away, then new flushes of flowers will develop while you are away. And when you return, you'll have a lovely display of flowers to welcome you back. People often think with hostas, it's all about the leaves. And the foliage does look lovely, like on this hosta nigrescens that I've got in a big pot on my patio, or hosta patriot over here. But you do get more than just foliage on hostas. You get flowers too. Most varieties will put on a lovely flowering display and you'll enjoy these through the height of summer. If I just come round here to my hosta patriot here, patriot with this lovely green leaf with a white edge to it. But look, the flowers are starting to form and you can enjoy a beautiful display of flowers. Once they're finished, just cut them off at the base. They'll be in flower for probably a good six weeks or so before the petals fall. And then you'll be left with that lovely display of variegated foliage to enjoy through to the end of the year. Now, on a brick set path like this, you can, if you want, treat the whole thing with a path weed killer earlier in the year to get rid of the weeds. But if I don't do that, then it's just a matter of just regularly through the summer, just using a weeding tool or a blade or something, just go up and pull the weeds out of the gaps between the paving stones. They will grow back, but again, it's a, just a nice little job to do on a, a bright day. And it saves using garden chemicals which can be costly as well can't they but because I've got a dog 
I don't like to use weed killers on my lawns or my paths. So instead, I will just, a couple of times through the summer, just go along in all of the gaps between the brick sets on my path. I will just pull the weeds out. If you want, you can actually use some boiling water as well and pour that on, and that helps to, uh, to kill off the weeds. Or sometimes you can even just put a little bit of salt on them to get rid of the weeds as well. Just a job to be done regularly through the summer. Aeoniums are great in patio pots too. These are succulent plants. I think native to the Canary Islands, so they really don't need that much water. They'll be great on a hot, sunny patio. All gorgeous, great, large rosettes of foliage coming up. They do flower, but usually it's just the leaves that you'll grow this for. It's what I'd call a succulent, but I, again, I'm just moved this to my unheated greenhouse for the winter. Could move it into a spare bedroom onto a windowsill to keep it going. There's lots of different varieties of aeonium that you can grow. I like succulents in pots and things like, I'm just gonna come around here to sedum varieties are ideal. And this is a new sedum, which was introduced in about 2016. It actually won the Chelsea Flower Show Plant of the Year that year. It's a sedum called Atlantis. Dwarf variety, just in a patio pot here, so good on a hot sunny patio. A dainty variegated leaf, green stripe down the middle, cream around the outside. And now we're coming into July, the flowers are just starting to open. These gorgeous golden yellow flowers, which will be carried through July and into August, puts on quite a show. So really you'll grow it for its foliage, but the flowers can look beautiful through summer as well. Great for a hot, sunny patio. Now many people will know the large summer flowering hybrids of clematis, but possibly they don't know the value of these wonderful species. This is a mid to late summer flowering variety called clematis viticella etoile rose. Just look at those beautiful dainty hanging bell-shaped flowers. I've just grown this at the side of the garden alongside holly and some ivy at the back and I just let the clematis viticella just grow up through the shrubs clinging on which the leaf stalks just twine around is a self clinging climber and it just lays on this extra layer of beautiful flower to enjoy through until autumn. Wonderful variety to grow, very generous flowering variety. And a little tip for you, if you've ever grown clematis in your garden, the summer flowering varieties, and they've died of clematis wilt, the plants have just collapsed and fallen away, then do give these varieties of clematis viticella a go because they're naturally resistant to wilt. All I do in the winter, very simple pruning, cut all the stems off at ground level and it grows up from the bottom in the spring. I just let it clamber up through the shrubs. You've got through a hedge, over some shrubs in the garden, anything like you like like that. And it will put on this beautiful display of blooms here as we're moving into July, but it will carry these flowers for many, 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 many weeks to come.